welcome back to the Geneva Motor Show 2019, a very exciting show where there are lots of new cars. Now, this is a video where we're going to try and talk about a few cars which are potentially good investments or just cars that won't lose their value as much as others. Like if you, like me, when you're car shopping, you're looking for a car that's not going to lose 30% of its value in the first 10,000 miles. So, I'm going around looking at different cars, whether it's hypercars, supercars, or slightly more obtainable sports cars, with that in mind, and I wanted to share that with you, because I don't think it gets done that much, and I find it interesting. First things first, we're gonna start at maybe the bottom end of the scale, in terms of this video, because we will quickly go up, because when investing, the biggest payoff is actually in the more expensive cars, but, Toyota Supra behind me, brand new Toyota Supra. I actually drove this car um, on track a few months ago and it's just sort of starting to hit the roads, you're starting to see it around in more sort of areas and here at the Geneva Motor Show. I think that this car could potentially be a fairly uh, inexpensive, it's still you know not the cheapest car in the world, inexpensive way to get your hands into sort of the new car uh, flipping in a way business. I don't really flip cars, I just prefer buying them and not losing too much on them. Now the reason I believe that you would be able to buy one of these brand new and not lose too much are because of its history. The Supra has been around for a long long time. This is you know the last in a long list of generations of this car. It's got a massively long history. I'm gonna put a link to my Supra video where I give you the whole history of this car, all of the stats, everything. It's up here. That's where it is. It's up there apparently. That's where it's gonna be. The old Supras, the A80s, are now selling for a lot more than they were back in the day, right? Because they weren't made in huge, huge, huge numbers. There were a lot of them. Um, and they sort of became such a historical and important car for the, the lovers of Toyota and of the Supra brand. So now that we've got a new Supra here, the A90, following up from the historical A80, it kind of looks like it could be a car that maybe doesn't appreciate massively but at least holds its value for the first year or two. Another thing that points in that direction is that the first one, the first production Supra, was sold for 2.3 million dollars at an auction. Again, that will help push the value up with these cars. These, if you want to get an early one, obviously because there's such a big demand for them, it's pretty tricky, that helps as well. Right now, in the early production stages, the demand is much higher than the supply, so that will mean that if you get an early one and you don't want to keep it for too long, put 20, 30,000 kilometers on it, and then get rid of it, you're probably safe not to lose too much money. So it's super, a good way to sort of get into the game. I can't, I'm actually considering, so let me know what you think down below. Next. which is interesting and brings in a, another characteristic which is that you want your car to be from a big brand in order to have it as a safer investment is this Mercedes AMG GTR Roadster. Now, when investing, the fact that it is from a big brand actually helps quite a bit because it means that it's simpler to maintain the car um, and also often, just because of the popularity of it, there is a much higher demand. People know the brand, they trust the brand, and they associate a certain image with that brand. Mercedes and AMG in particular, who basically developed this whole car, have that brand loyalty from people. And the GTR version of their AMG um, has brand loyalty from many, many clients all around the world. They did it extremely well, this car. This is the Roadster version, which I won't bore you with the stats. It's basically exactly the same as the coupe, just you can take the roof off. But what makes it interesting for this video is that it's limited to 750 units worldwide. 750 may sound like a lot, but to give you an idea, that will make it rarer than the Porsche 991 Speedster. It'll make it rarer than the 458 Speciale, for example. Much rarer than the Pista, Spider, and there aren't that many cars that are this limited. Now, a TDF basically was produced in about the same amount of numbers. I think there were 51 less than this car. So it's gonna be extremely rare. And with it being a Mercedes product, there's gonna be a lot of demand for it. So I see this car actually doing well long run. I'm not as sure, I'm not as comfortable as if it was with one of the big brands like, uh, well big brands, obviously this is a massive brand, but one of the sort of more predictable um, investment sort of companies like Porsche and Ferrari. Those two, you know that they have their cult following and they'll do well. Now it being AMG, does fill me with much more confidence than if it was a Morgan or something like that, like small companies 
Um, anyways, I think it could potentially do quite well. I'm really interested to see how this is going to go because I think it will tell us a lot about the way the market's heading for the next few years. So yeah, AMG GTR, we shall see. We've now moved way up in the scale in terms of cars that you can invest money in, but if you have a bunch of money and you want a car that has history, that has style and comes from a massive brand, three things which are very important. You know, realistically, the cars that will do best on the market are cars from big brands, um, cars that have a massive history behind them and are made in very limited numbers. The car behind me right here has all of those. It's the McLaren Speedtail and it is effectively uh, sort of kind of somewhat of a remake of the McLaren F1. It has some of the very familiar points of that car such as the three-seater interior. Um, it's also produced in, they're going to make 106 units, so very, very limited numbers. To give you an idea, the McLaren P1, there were 325 or 75, I think, of those cars. So far fewer of these are being made and 106 because that's the exact number of McLaren F1s that were on the road as well. That means that this car has a massive history because for the first time it really is kind of a second take at the F1. The three seat configuration inside, take two mates with you and be decently comfortable. Now it has a petrol engine, an electric engine over 1100 horsepower, so some new technology as well. And I believe that this car with its base price of over 2 million right now is going to be worth a lot of money in not too, too long, depending on how the market goes. So if you have a bunch of money and you manage to get an allocation for one of these, if you're having bought a P1, an LT, an LT Spider, all of that jazz, you've done well and your money, I believe, is very, very safe. Lamborghini SVJ then behind me, quite an obvious one for this category as it is a limited production Lamborghini. Only 800 of these being produced in the world, whilst the coupes, there will be 900 coupes already trading for a little bit over their list price, so there's no reason why these wouldn't follow in the footsteps. I think these will not be big bucks kind of selling for double in a few years. I do think they will be selling around 50 to 200 max over list. Uh, in the next few years and they will always hold steady. I don't see them going under the value of the car in the near future. At least. That's my opinion. That's because it's a limited production car from a big company and through the Ant Personum program you can also modify it to your specification if you want to, which has an effect. Anyways, let's go find the next one. It wouldn't be a video about car investing unless you had a Ferrari in it, would it? So this behind me is the brand new F8 Tributo. Now, these people are already talking about them trading over list price. That is because how hard they are to get your hands on, you know, straight away. Basically, some cars aren't limited like this. It's a normal production model car, production run, and it's not limited at all, but it will be trading over list for the first six months to maybe a year, purely because of how hard it will be to get your hands on one of the first ones. Everyone wants one, tons of orders are already in. It's a beautiful car. It's a completely new model Ferrari, and often that leads to people just placing tons and tons and tons of orders in. Demand, again, is higher than supply, and therefore, the cars go for over list. So I see these being a good short-term investment if you can get an early one, but not long-term because it's a turbocharged car, it doesn't have a manual. In the long run, it will end up going down. Like any investment, the bigger risk you put into it, the bigger it may pay off. Now, behind me is the brand new Bugatti La Voiture Noire. One was made and it cost 16.4 million euros. So the risk 
is extremely high with it being so valuable but the payoff could be massive as well the story behind this car is based well i mean it's an homage of the old atlantic the bugatti atlantic of which four were made one was lost one was burned two are left the two that are left could sell for up to a hundred million in today's world so the fact that this is replacing replacing the one that was lost right so there is a crazy story behind this car only one was made slightly longer wheelbase than the other chirons and it's just such an epic and i see this being worth yes 16.4 million now the most expensive a new car's ever been worth but i think with there only being one with it being from bugatti bugatti being backed by volkswagen and the story behind the atlantic i don't think this car will ever be worth less than what it's worth today. That is my feeling on it. Let me know what you think. The dramatic music is here to end this video. I hope you've learned something. If it interests you, please do let me know and we can make more of these types of videos. I'm probably not gonna invest in any of these cars because I don't have the money right now. But if you were going to, let me know which one you think would be the best investment in the comments down below. Cheers guys, subscribe, like, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.